global markets business, our treasury business, mm. which has been a tremendous success for us and really plays to our strengths as, as an international bank. We're able to deliver products from around the world for our customers. Um, we'll also want to continue with uh, large corporates who are both investing strongly in India, but also are expanding outside India. And uh, we have the capability to take them to other countries around the world. And then we also see good opportunities with the, with the smaller companies. And to, to grow with them, to see them as small companies, to see them, see them grow is, is always very fulfilling as a banker. And we particularly want to focus on the companies that have an international orientation. Okay. They either import, export, or are looking to invest offshore. I played at uh, Sun City in South Africa one time and it was a par three golf course. And instead of having water in front of the green, they had this pit and it was full of alligators. We're in conversation with Stuart Davies of uh, HSBC and we've been having some rather interesting anecdotes from him about his time with play, uh, players of international repute. And there's a brilliant story about one man who's actually, uh, actually I shouldn't tell you who it is because he's going to tell us about this one man and how you met him at a course in Taiwan. That's right. I was in a, a pro-am before the Taiwan Open and I was in a group with this uh, Korean player who I'd never heard of before. And as I was chatting to him, I said, um, what are you doing after the tournament? And he said, I'm going off to the US to try and get my playing card. And it was KJ Choi. Wow. And it was fantastic that, uh, that I had the privilege of playing golf with him before he became famous on the PGA Tour. That's true. See, that's what I say. KJ Choi is the one man everybody wants to play with because he's so calm that even Tiger Woods likes the idea of him being his partner at the Augusta, for example. So it's KJ Choi that's actually given... Uh, given Stuart his complete poison come on the course. There's another very nice story which we're going to tell you as we walk to the fairway about a potato farm in Tasmania. That's right. Um, I had the privilege of playing at this uh, golf course, uh, Barn Bugle, and it's only been open a few years, and it's built on the seafront. And it's a classic uh, Lynx course where, where the strong winds blow in. Course or a potato farm? <laughs> well, it was a potato farm, and when they built the course, they deliberately didn't move any soil. So the whole course is exactly where the potato farm was and, um, and that's where the fairways are. So there was no graders came in to move soil. They just built the course where it is and it's just a fantastic course. I can so imagine. Sue, I, I do get a sense that besides banking across the world, you do like the idea of golfing across the world. So if I was to pin you down and ask you about your favourite courses, which ones would you come up with? If I could say my favourite hole, I played at uh, Sun City in South Africa one time, and it was a par three golf course. And instead of having water in front of the green, they had this pit, and it was f full of alligators. Wow. And so you had to hit over the alligators to get onto the green. So if you were short <laughs> and you landed in the pit... Um, the alligators would come for you. <laughs> uh, you just left your ball there. You didn't go and try and, try and retrieve it. So I, I, I thought that hole was, was, was fantastic. Well, it certainly sounds adventurous to say the least. <laughs> Time now for our part of the adventure. Start. Oh, I hit something there. Yeah, you got a bounce. That's not bad for a par five. It only helps take the ball ahead. That's right. something you feel is going to get slightly better. better. Hmm. But you know, now that I say that, Stuart, I feel like asking you, uh, 
we always look at a shot and say, okay, it could get a tad better. What is that thing about yourself or your banking or your golf that you want to fix? I guess with, it, with our bank, it's a little bit like the way I play golf. Love consistency. You know, it's one, you know, the key thing about being a, being a bank, you know, as a bank you do a huge number of transactions every day. You're interacting with, you know, a lot of customers. And how good you are depends upon whether you can deliver consistently at the right level. So it's not always easy because just like you said in golf, you don't always get a consistent game. Correct. You know, I, unfortunately with my golf, um, I try and hit the ball too hard rather than just accepting what's within my ability and try and do that every time. But in banking, you have to be able to deliver at a good level every time. Uh, and it's not good enough that just occasionally you, you hit the good shot. Yeah. You have to be able to do it all the time. You know, it's basically getting the team to, to be able to, to, to deliver consistently uh, to the customer at a high level. So you were talking about teams, and it takes me to the point that golf, unlike most other sport, is not such a team sport. It's about the individual. Sometimes they like to say that bankers are bigger than the banks because it's the personalities that matter. Do you buy that theory, or has that been wiped off during the recession? There are no stars at HSBC. Um, because HSBC is about 300,000 people around the world delivering to 150 million customers. And uh, I guess that's part of, part of our, our DNA. So we don't make heroes of individuals. It's about people working together to deliver good, good results for our customers. So in that, in that way, uh, the way we run the bank is very different to the way you play golf. Okay, so that's the one thing different, even though the HSBC brand and the golfing brand do come together every now and then. On that note, such pleasure. Thanks so much, Stuart. Okay, Good okay. Thanks, Shirley. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Nothing worse than hitting a great, 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 great shot uh, and have it be off your line. So instead of hitting the green, you're off in the middle of the trees or a bunker or somewhat. Today we're going to talk about alignment, which is going to hit you your target, help you hit your target better. So whether you're practicing in a natural area or uh, on a similar like this, there's lots of different targets that you can line up to. So when you line up, what you're going to do is you're going to come from behind the ball and identify your target. And then once this happens, you walk up to the side, keeping your eye on that line of your ball and your target. Then you're going to place the face of the club exactly on that line. So while you keep your posture, I want you to take your club in your hands like this with your elbows against your side. Uh, and you're looking down at the ball and the shaft exactly covers the ball. And as I look down that shaft, I can see that if I'm lined up to my target correctly, now you can see that the shaft of the club is pointing right at that cactus, okay? So now that my body is lined up properly, I can put the club back down and then take my shot. So being able to hit the shot, hit your target, could make the difference between hitting a green or not hitting a green, getting a par or not getting a par. So make sure you take proper care on your alignment, do your alignment properly and get your scores lower and have a more enjoyable game. <laughs>